Bougainville was a paradise. Land is our heartbeat. Fire. This gentleman will not take our land. There is going to be a guerrilla style of warfare here shortly. It was a bloody war. Bougainville is an island to the east of Papua New Guinea. Horrors have occurred there. 20,000 people killed. It is an apocalyptic story of a ravaged people. Well, thank you so much for your company this morning. Soldiers Without Guns is a feature-length documentary which tells the fascinating story of modern history's most successful peacekeeping mission. Now, after 10 years of war, 14 failed peace agreements and 20,000 people killed, New Zealand stepped into the Bougainville Civil War armed with only hackers, guitars and cultural understanding. Award-winning documentary maker William Watson joins us right now. Welcome, Will. Welcome, Will. Thank you very much. Oh, this is a fascinating story. Now, you were behind the 2016 TV doco, weren't you? Yes. And guitars. Yeah, that's right. So what made you want to retell the story? Um, I actually um, had been working on that for over a decade and wasn't really that interested in telling, retelling the story, but I was... Um, a distributor came to me and says, look, we really want you to, you know, tell the full feature version of this film. And, and because it's such a powerful story and so in need right now in the world, I sort of stepped up after about a year of convincing and so here I am six months into the film and very close to finishing and it's a much more powerful product just having that extra time to add music and add you know much better quality footage and, and it's just a much better story basically. Wow. Well, and I've seen it and it is amazing, congratulations, loved it. Thank what you. were the key differences between say Huckers and Guitars and this particular one? Um, the first thing was the footage that we were able to garner. So we've spent the last year, so that year break, we've got a whole lot of new footage to be able to tell the story in a much more powerful way. Um, a whole lot of new interviews and um, we got a lot of very good drone footage too. So we get a very good overview of the island because it's absolutely beautiful over there. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. So it's like, to the east of Papua New Guinea, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what actually happened? What started the civil war in the first place? So well, they had they started the largest copper mine in the history of mankind um, in the late '60s, and then you know that was without any real consultation with the local people. And um, that was that, an Australian company, wasn't it? Yeah, it was an Australian yeah. company. Yep, yep, Rio Rio Tinto Conzinc, and. Um, so that really antagonised the locals, then there was the uprising, they weren't listened to and then the war started. But the thing with wars is once they start they're very hard to stop, wars are very robust, peace is very fragile. So they had 14 failed peace agreements and no one seemed to be able to broker any sort of peace until New Zealand says look we're going to go over there but we're going to do something different, we're going to take guitars and people thought, you're not going to take, please don't take yeah. guitars because you're going into the worst war zone in the Pacific's mm. history. Now, the, the, the Pacific has never seen a civil war like this. So please don't take guitars. Now, I was a student journalist at the time and I thought, oh my God, New Zealand's going crazy. You know, we're going, you know, here's a general mm. that's, that's crazy. He's taking these um, soldiers over there to the slaughter. And um, yeah, I was completely wrong. So, um, you know, I was, I was fascinated by how he led, a, led an army to a civil war using guitars, using music, using, using cultural understandings, a lot of, lot of like hakas, a lot of waiatas, a lot of love, yeah. a lot of aroha, all these beautiful things that New Zealand are able to bring culturally to a war zone is all what helped us end that war. And, and the, the feeling I got watching the documentary is that New Zealand, with the help of Don McKinnon, you know, we actually showed them some respect. They came to that hui at Burnham, and that was a real turning point for them, wasn't it? Yeah, the, the, I saw, one of the major turning points was that you had these two warring factions coming together. Now, traditionally, they had been put in separate barracks, and someone would run between them back and forth. That's how they typically do this. New Zealand says, well, you're going to come into Marae. You're under our protocols, um, and you guys are going to like talk to each other how you would always do it traditionally. So they got to these two sides together to talk, and they talked through their differences. And that was the Melanesian way; they were given a week to talk through their differences. Um, there was a, a hongi, and so you had these warring sides actually coming together, touching noses. And when they did that, it completely broke the ice, and they burst into tears and were able to really break all the barriers. And 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 from that point on, the whole peace talks really took on a whole new movement that no one had ever thought would happen. You know, mm. there'd been 14 failed peace agreements. Mm. Incredible, isn't it? And it is an incredible uh, show, a documentary film. Let's yeah. take a look at some of it now. The Maori concept group, an 
a good shipment of guitars are going to be the main weapons in our arsenal. Who, as a commander, would say we're taking guitars and not rifles? Fair to say, felt a little bit naked. Don't give up. It was women who were willing to talk. I was conscious that we could fail any hour of the day. Wow. Have you spent much time in Bougainville? Yeah, I've been there three times so far, and it's a really amazingly beautiful island in the Pacific, you know, Emerald Island right there. And, yeah, it's just it's one of those beautiful Pacific countries, and you would have never thought anything like that would have occurred yeah. there, you know. Oh, and that was the sad thing for me. I didn't know much about the Bougainville story, but I guess your documentary, your film, helped me understand it. But what yeah. I found fascinating was the role of women in the country. They are the keepers of the land, right. and if it wasn't for them pressurising their men to go and sign this peace accord, it may not have never happened. Well, that's right, and I think also, just internationally, like, women aren't given any credit to get involved in the peace process, and certainly in Bougainville, women are the keepers of the land. They are looking after the land for the future generations. And they felt that their land that they were keeping for future generations wasn't being kept well. And that was sort of, you know, one of the genesis of the, of the conflict. And so yeah. when New Zealand went over and they says, listen, what's the war about? And the woman says, well, it's about land, you know. And New Zealand said, well, of the last 14 failed peace agreements, how many women have been involved? And they counted that all up and they worked out that there'd been none. Right. Yeah, and you see, the thing <laughs> is, you think about any situation, women are generally the peacemakers in a lot of situations, so they should be involved <clears> in these <throat> big things. Well, the movie looks absolutely fascinating. Oh, it's amazing. It's yeah. great. So Go thank, see it. Thank you so much for stopping by. Yeah. Soldiers Without Guns is set to be released by the end of the year. You can check out the TMI Pictures website for further details.